in, in the last 70 years since the uh, farmers have been using uh, ammonia, there's, uh, they've used, uh, well for example now we're using 200 million tons a year and no accidents. So I, I believe that the chance of an accident is very low. Now is there a risk of explosion or anything like that? It's the reverse actually, it will not explode. And so in order to actually make it work, you have to use a little bit of igniter fuel. We have two ways of doing it. You can extract hydrogen from the NH3 at the engine. We have a little box the size of a cigar box and it will take off a little bit of hydrogen. You have to use that as an igniter fuel. If you, if you want one or two percent igniter fuel in order to make the NH3 explode. So in a tank, you can take a tank and put it over a fire, it won't explode. Shoot a gun in it, it won't explode. Put a little bit of igniter fuel with it, it becomes a fuel. In a regular engine you're using, say you buy a new car from the lot, it has injection uh, in the, into each cylinder. So with ours, we, we put, when we do a conversion, we have a little hose going into each uh, intake uh, manifold. We just rejig the computer that's on the car to, to switch that it starts on regular fuel and then it goes back to 97% uh, NH3. So actually we're running between two and 3% igniter fuel. And we use the original gasoline as the igniter fuel. We can strip hydrogen off the NH3 we, if, if for whatever reason there was no, we didn't want to have any igni uh, gasoline igniter fuel, we just put a little stripper box there and strip off a little bit of hydrogen and use it as, it as igniter fuel. This product could essentially be safer for the entire world. We're not transporting trains of oil then. Exactly, that's something we didn't mention. Yeah. This fuel doesn't need to be transported. This fuel is made where you use it. So there's no need to transport this around in tanker trucks because it's made where you use it. If you're going to use it here, you make it here. So there's, there's, there's also a fuel saving, energy saving to that. You don't have to transport the oil to the refinery. You don't have to transport the, the refined product to the gas stations. You don't have to account for the energy that's used in that. This is the reverse of oil. Everything you think about oil, first of all, you have to find it. Then you have to drill it. Then it goes in a pipeline and spills and causes a whole bunch of environmental problems. These oil companies that are out in Alberta in, in the uh, tar sands, they're going to walk away, you can be sure, at some point in time. And it'll just be like another disaster, like up in the Arctic someplace. And there's a disaster up there, and who ends up paying for it? The citizens of Canada. Whereas with the green NH3, there's no cost to the citizens. It's only a savings. It's, it's the reverse of oil. It's the complete reverse of oil. The green NH3 cleans up the world as you use it. Comparatively to oil, there's zero danger. The only danger of green NH3 is if you took it and breathed it. That's, and I'm not trying to cover that in any way. Obviously, if something has a, has caustic written on it, that you you don't want to have it in your in your body. But sometime after we applied for the patent, the phone started to ring with people that realized that it was a, a transportation fuel, and. From that, it became an energy storage tool. Just actually recently, with the electricity prices in Ontario going up in the last couple of years, we realized that, uh, that this would be good for the, wind, uh, for the windmills because when the wind's blowing at three in the morning and nobody needs the electricity, you'll drive by these windmills up at Shelburne or Cambridge or Chatham and you'll see them sitting not running. You say, well, there's lots of wind. Why wouldn't they be running them? Because nobody needs the electricity right then, so they don't bother running the windmill. But all that energy that's blowing past that windmill could be made into fuel to bring back out at the peak. Well, like I say, 90% of this project isn't making this video. Yeah. It's getting it out there. Yeah. If, if they have a question, just to go on to the Green NH3 website and it'll get answered. Because I, if I can't answer it, I'll, I got a hundred science, or maybe a thousand scientists that can't. I've got people from University of Texas Tech, University of Florida, University of Iowa, University of Michigan, University of Ontario in Oshawa, University of New Brunswick in Fredericton. I've got all these cheerleaders that just, you know, come on, let's get this going, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They got no money, they've got a little bit of time, so. It, we just got to figure a way to make it happen. We all need to come together and make it Yes, happen. yes, yes. And then, and the jobs. Like, just think, you, anybody that's listening to this, you know that there's somebody out there that's underemployed or unemployed. And if, if this fuel comes along and creates 100,000 jobs, the consultant at the university tells me, Roger, your problem isn't going to be employing people, it's going to be in finding people to employ. Because the, the time is soon coming where there's going to be more jobs than there are people to fill them.